I pray for them every night, them little baby day out there, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Where are they home? Where are they? Something needs to be done. I'm 13 years old. Trouble with stealing cars before. I think I've been stolen three or four. Unfortunately, there, there have been kids as young as 10, 11 committing these offences. We are seeing the community more and more afraid. I get scared sometimes because some kids, they walk around with knives and stuff. You're just chaining our kids up so they can't move anywhere. CCTV, another sensor, all these lights light up at night time. We've had to put in a new gate, the other one got smashed in. So you can see here where they've tried to get up to here, to get up to here, to get up to here, to try and break in up here. Um, these have been smashed off previously. I live right next door in this house here. We were having people uh, come in under the building. So as you can see, we've had to put corrugated iron all the way around the bottom of the building. My name is Troy Birmingham. I've been here running a business since 2001. They always seem to come in groups, 10 or 12 of them, run in, grab the tip jar, run off. Um, you know, serving customers over here, making a drink, come in, grab a bottle over the bar, bolt off. I'd say the youth crime is epidemic. I would say that it's something that over the last 30 years definitely hasn't gotten any better. It's getting worse. But a lot of the, the problems you see to happen against a lot of Asian tourists, a lot of elderly, easy targets. I don't want to come across as a racist, but it's, it really is just a fact of life here that a lot of this crime is, is committed by young Indigenous kids. I get scared sometimes because some kids, they walk around with knives and stuff. I'm 14 years old and I'm a Mariba local. I've never been in trouble with the law. Um, that is, that's, that's half of a crew that goes around Mariba stealing people's stuff out of their houses and stuff. They're, they're thieves, they're like street rats. I think youth crime is getting worse because um, there's been break-ins at schools, um, motorbike shops and stealing like motorbikes and breaking into people's personal homes and stealing items. Yeah, I've had my scooter stolen like twice now. Um, it makes me very angry because like, I can't really do nothing about it until like I find who did it. I would tell the law that they're stealers and get them in trouble and get them curfewed. What we're doing is not working. Something which, you know, the Queensland government's doing. It's been a long time coming. Maybe tough love is the option we need to, to look at. The government has unveiled a suite of changes, coming down heavy on repeat youth offenders. GPS trackers will be fitted to high-risk youths who are granted bail. In the cases of serious indictable offences, we are reversing the presumption of bail. It's not just a revolving door that the community probably um, thinks there is, especially with a new change in legislation. There's, it's definitely been, um, helped us out a lot. We are seeing an increase in these kids being remanded in custody. So we're out there 24-7 targeting these young people, targeting these offenders. The stolen vehicles, just taken off from us. burglaries, Wait, stop! they're probably the two biggest ones that we deal with in Cairns. Unfortunately, there, there have been kids as young as 10, 11 committing these offences. Some of these young persons go on a run when they get in the mood. It, it just kind of um, snowballs into these 30, 40 odd offences. And, and it is really just that small group. Um, that we're dealing with, whereas maybe the others on the peripherals, uh, they'll do one car and that, that's their criminal history. Hey buddy, what's happening? Howdy. Just with the police. Huh? Just with the police. So the co-responder model, it's just a way of diverting kids from that youth justice court, court process and system that they seem to get entrenched in. There are occasions where these kids have knew they're in a situation where they might find themselves in trouble, so they give us a call and whether we go pick them up or just have that chat over the phone to get them out of that situation. More than half the kids locked up in Queensland's watch houses are Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander. 
do you believe that Kent is a racist now? Do I have to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, oh, I'd rather not answer it. Like, yeah, I think, oh, yeah, I might. I'd rather not go into it. We uh, patrol the streets on a weekly or at least bi weekly basis uh, to basically deter crime. My name's Tom, I'm uh, second in command and spokesman of Can Safe Nights. We are seeing the community more and more afraid and um, concerned about uh, what could happen next and uh, more and more people are taking you know, personal uh, measures. Obviously it depends on the offence, uh, what our sort of course of action is. Uh, we don't like to necessarily put ourselves or members in harm's way. If there's something about to happen that we can prevent, we will. You know, people who see us out on the street will uh, disperse and they won't um, necessarily uh, be as active as they would otherwise have been. Can Safe Nights is not at all a vigilante group. We're just there to manage the crime wave in our own way as citizens. It sounds like vigilantes. Um, yes, we do. The type of people that are acting as vigilantes, um, they're not indigenous people. Their behaviour has hurt the city. By their actions, we've had a few deaths in the city now. We're off to the memorial site for the four children that we lost. And four teenagers have been killed and one injured in a single vehicle crash in North Queensland. Emergency crews were called to the scene in Townsville before dawn. One male teenager has been taken to Townsville University Hospital with minor injuries and is believed to be in a stable condition. The car was reportedly stolen. Behind me here over my right shoulder is, is um, the area where the, the car hit the pole. Recordings from the children themselves inside the car said that they were being chased, but not specifically saying that it was either police or vigilantes, but they were saying they were being chased. There's two of them that were my nieces um, and a relative of this fella here too, the, the young fella so, who passed away. They were connected to a lot of people through, through their family relationships. Honestly, this is the first time I've been to this site since the loss of my young relative. Um, due to the loss that I've suffered in my life, it's very hard to be here. Um, brings up a lot of feelings. You can't just get out here and look to knock kids' heads off. If you really love the community, you would be, you would be in it and doing something about it. Putting the kids behind bars is just a band-aid fix. The kids come out and their life's still the same. All of you, come here. Uh, what were you doing down there? Oh no, we just got like crossed the school. You're not allowed to go in the yard. Yeah. Who's them there? Oh, that's my other mates. <laughs> well, usually I sit and talk to them or give them a dressing down, but I always sit and talk to them. You know what I'm looking for? Two scooters. Who's got them? I don't know. What about you? No. And what's your curfew uh, hours? Seven to seven. Yeah, well it's past seven now. I'll be round after. You better be home. Yeah, I'll be home. Uh, I go on the streets because I really care about these kids. I care. My name's Rhonda Dooley and I do night patrol in Mariba. I don't see vigilante as a threat. I don't see the police as a threat. It's the youth themselves. Uh, the kids come on the street at night because they're not safe at home. The kids are safer out in the streets. They'll stay up in the streets till about five, half past five in the morning, and then they'll prepare themselves for school or don't go to school, either way. Someone has to love them, no matter. You know, they get up to mischief, somebody has to love them back. Get it. Get it. Come on. <laughs> Uh, we're taking you out to where the campsite is, out on country, just outside of Mariba. Where are you fellas going? We target the kids that are on the streets, broken homes, traumatised. Putting kids in cells is not good for them. 
when they come out, they'll wait for a while and just do crime again. So what sort of things have you done? Uh, like breaking into a metal workshop and spray painting. I had a caution for that. But if I did it again, I'll be on curfew. And I'm 13 years old. I don't know why I do it. I guess you get all happy up when you're doing it, but then when you get in trouble, then you just think about yourself, what's going to happen about your life. There's no good for you. I hope bringing them out here will steer them away from crime in town. Getting them out here to teach them respect. Respect. If we can introduce respect to the land, maybe they'll respect their elders. Yeah, there's all different things. Teaching them how to find food in the bush. Hey. And then, then sometimes we'll sit down and have a, a group session at night and just talk about the day and then talk about their lives as well. Now we'll start cooking up again. It's not the answer to everything, but it's getting our kids back out um, with elders, and that's what I mean, reconnecting with the land. You know, they took away our rights to discipline, they took away our rights to go out hunting. So once you take away all of our rights, what do they expect us to do? So you can't put it back on the parents. You've got to put it back to these laws that have been made. You're just chaining our kids up so they can't move anywhere. The thing that I want to see changes people not doing crime, swearing at people, smashing windows. And how do you think we can stop that? Do something like this. Go places where they don't have to get in trouble. Go camping. Do something. Don't judge them just because they, you think they're naughty. There's a reason behind that. And something, something's happened in their life or something is still happening in their life. It's nobody's born bad.